Whether you already have your Xbox Series X or you're still looking to get one, in today's video, I'm gonna show you five accessories that you should get, like this mobile gaming clip, which allows you to take your gaming on the road. And this gaming clip allows you to attach it directly to your controller so that you can kind of tilt it directly to how you like it. And it's a lot better than trying to set it up against a wall or laying it on your lap where it might slide down all the time on you. Welcome back everybody, my name is Wayne. Thank you so much for being here. And if this is your first time here, I make videos just like this one to simplify your gaming experience. Okay, and so now because this video is going to be a little bit of a longer one, let's go ahead and jump straight into it and talk about that first item that you'll want. Now the first thing that you're going to need with your new Xbox Series X is some sort of additional hard drive space. Now the Xbox Series X only comes with the one terabyte hard drive and by the time you add in the operating system, you're looking at even less. So what are you going to do with all of the games that you have? For instance, if you wanted to install the Xbox Series X version of Call of Duty alone, you're looking at over 100 gigabytes of game space. And if you wanted to add Warzone into that, now you're looking at over 200 gigabytes of drive space. And as they do more updates, you're going to be looking at even more for just one game. As well, if you have a bunch of old Xbox One games that you want to transfer over, then you're also going to look at needing additional hard drive space for that because this sucker is going to fill up very quickly. Now, there are a few ways that you can solve this problem, and one of the first things you can do is buy the expansion card that is made by Seagate. Now, this is a $219 item, so if you're like me, you may not really want to fork out that right now, especially since you just spent a lot of money on getting a new Xbox Series X. So the other option that you can do is go and buy yourself an external hard drive or an external SSD drive so that you can plug it directly into your Series X. Now, the downside to using an external hard drive is that you cannot play your Xbox Series X games off of those hard drives. Those will have to be installed. So you will have to make some decisions on what games you want to leave on your system versus what games you want to store uh, either on your external hard drive or in the cloud. My suggestion would be to use your external hard drive to put your Xbox One games and play them directly off of there. And if you have room on your internal hard drive still, I would maybe put a couple of those most played Xbox One games on your hard drive until you need additional space, and then just move it over and just play it directly off of your external hard drive when needed. All right, and so now that you have the external hard drive, the next thing you'll notice about your Xbox Series X is that the controller still does not come with internal batteries. So you're going to want to figure out a way to make sure you always have your controller ready to go when you're playing. And one thing I would suggest buying is something like this plug and play a rechargeable battery kit from Power A. Uh, you can also just go onto Amazon and find yourself some rechargeable batteries or even just buy a pack of AA batteries. But guys, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you have some additional batteries on hand so that you don't have to stop in the middle of your gaming. And so one of the nice things about this particular battery pack is that it comes in a pack of two for around $25. So speaking of buying two batteries in one package, what are you going to do with that other battery other than put it in another controller, guys? So that's going to be my next suggestion is to purchase yourself either a backup controller or if you know you're going to have friends or family over playing with you, then of course you want to make sure that you get yourself another controller. Now, personally, I still use my Elite Series 2 that I bought just before my Xbox Series came out. And it really just kind of depends on the situation situation of what I'm playing, whether I want to use my Elite Series 2 or if I want to use my newer Xbox Series X controller. The positive to using your new Xbox Series X controller is that it's going to come with the updated DLI in it. So your lag input is going to be very, very minimal compared to when you're playing with like something of the Elite Series 2. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing your next controller. If something like having the paddles is you know extremely important to you and having those modifications on the controller, you can still grab one of those, um, but you're going to be missing out on that DLI. So for instance, when I'm playing Call of Duty, I tend to play uh, on my new Xbox Series X controller. And when I'm playing games like Overwatch behind me here, I actually switch back over to my Elite Series 2 because I really prefer the paddles in that case. And I don't have to have that extreme speed in my controller while it would help, sure, but I prefer the paddles. So it's kind of a give and take on that situation. But if you're looking to buy just a brand new controller guys um, and the paddles aren't an issue, then I definitely would recommend picking up another one of the Xbox Series X version controllers for your new system. 
Now, gaming isn't complete without being able to hear what you're playing and really truly immersing yourself in the sounds of the games. And while yes, a soundbar will work, in my opinion, you really need a headset to take your gaming to the next level. For instance, since if you're in Call of Duty or a game like Fortnite and you wanna make sure you're hearing those footsteps come up behind you and not sounding like they're in front of you from the soundbar, you're going to want to purchase yourself a nice, good headset. And also headphones come in handy when you wanna play late at night and you don't wanna disturb your family members or your friends or somebody who might be sleeping already at that point. Now, personally, I've been using my Astro 840s for about, I think it's four to six years now, but hey, it's 2021 now and it's time to get away from those wires hanging down and upgrade myself to a truly wireless experience. And so one thing that I've recently purchased for myself are these SteelSeries Artist 9 headphones. And if you guys would like to see a full on review of these, make sure you leave me a comment below. All right, guys, and so that's gonna lead us up to probably our most important accessory that we're going to need to buy when it comes to using your Xbox Series X. Now, this isn't something that you're going to necessarily buy immediately because it is going to be the most expensive accessory that you're going to have to get. And that's going to be a brand new TV. And no doubt by now you've heard that the new Xbox Series X is going to be able to push 120 Hertz on 4K resolution TVs. So if you want to make sure that you're maximizing your Xbox Series X purchase, then you want to look no further than grabbing yourself a new TV. However, the downside to obviously buying a new TV with these type of specs is that they are going to be a bit pricier. But if you have the means and you really want to take advantage of that, then I have a couple suggestions for you. And so the first model I'm going to suggest is this 48 inch LG CX model. And this model comes with a lot of nice features, but one of them that I think is really key is the fact that it comes with four HDMI 2.1 inputs. And so this will really help you kind of future-proof your TV and your experiences. So maybe down the road, you will also purchase a PS5 and you wanna be able to plug both of those in at the same time and just switch sources between the two and still maximize it at the 120 Hertz. You're really going to have to have that 2.1 input ability and you're going to get four of those on this particular TV. Now this model comes in at the time of making this video at about $1,400. So as I mentioned, this is definitely going to be one of the most expensive accessories you're going to buy. Uh, in fact, even more than your console itself. And the second option that I'm going to suggest is this TV behind me, which is the Samsung Q80T model. Now the downside to this particular model though, is that it only does come with a one 2.1 HDMI input. So you are going to have to kind of pick and choose which system you want to plug into that if you do have plans to buy a, a PS5 or some other 2.1 needing um, input down the road. But the reason I did go with this particular Samsung is because I've had Samsung for a very long time and uh, they've always been very sturdy and very um, durable for me. So I just have a lot of experience with them and I felt very confident in buying this TV. In fact, I've also bought another one that I use for my business as well where we do a lot of gaming on it there. And this particular TV did also come in about $200 cheaper, so it just fit my budget a little bit more. Um, so the price of this one at the time of this video was around $1,200. And speaking of using a 4K TV with the new Xbox Series X, if you are having trouble getting it set up to allow the 120 hertz, then make sure you check out the video that's coming up on the screen next. And as I mentioned, uh, if you are interested in grabbing any of these particular items that I've shown you today, uh, I have left the links in the description below. So make sure you check those out if you'd like to grab one of those. And with that guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.